but it's still a very, very colorful. And uh, you, you can feel free to stay where you are or come up to the console, whichever is nicer. Uh, the acoustic, however, is a bit more, uh, it's, it's a bit more covered. It's a bit more balanced when you're sitting in the room. I think it would be, you know, worth it to sort of move from here to there to sort of compare and contrast the different kinds of things. Uh, but first I'm going to start with this sort of Bach prelude and fugue that I play for everybody. And you've probably heard it nine million times, but it, it works very, very well on this course. is a very interesting, uh, it's an interesting stop because you don't find it a lot too much on uh, modern instruments, but it's actually very useful because a lot of times, especially in Baroque music, the mixture, um, and this is especially true in this house, this room, uh, is just really, really overpowering and you just, you, you need something that's, it's a bit less prominent but you still want that cap at the end. You still need it to be full and bright and brilliant. And the Sith Lute is, an act, is absolutely wonderful uh, because it, it can serve as that, but it also is very, very lovely in um, gap registrations, like um, eight and one and, and four and one, as I'll demonstrate a bit briefly in a new prelude that um, Mr. Marty, my teacher, uh, sort of nudged me to learn. Um, and so I, I, I took a look at it, and I, what, I, what I'm presenting today can only be something of a rough sketch, or in my opinion. Uh, but I, I looked at it, and um, it's really nice in a lot of ways, and it's very fitting for this organ, because it doesn't need a lot, but it, it definitely lets you say a lot. It's a very emotionally strident piece. There's a lot of dissonance and 
resolution, and it's it's pretty short. So I'll just stop talking already. Which one you did? Yes. So this will be the prelude in A major by J. S. Bach. So I encourage you afterwards to just come up, even if you don't have any music, don't don't have any issues, to just come around and uh, just experiment with some of the stops. Uh, it's really great. Uh, another one of the things, points of contention, uh, is that you have this um, the Brewster, and you see all of these stops here labeled, and we have all these great things planned for it. But at the moment, there are only two speaking stops on the second manual. Um, one of which is duplex, well both of which are actually um, just duplex from the great, which would be the bell gamba, which is an eight foot uh, string stop, and the four foot octave. So it's a sort of gentle, um, accompanimental sort of sound. Uh, and we've placed these in the, in, in the spots of the four foot principal and the two foot flock flout, which is a stop for the eight foot bell gamba. Uh, everything else in the Bruce work is not speaking, unfortunately. Uh, and, and most everything in the pedal is also not speaking, except for the choral boss, which is unified from the four foot principle. Um, despite all of these sort of limitations, it still works rather nicely uh, for some Baroque repertoire that needs you to switch manuals a bit often. Um, so I'll be playing two pieces that sort of demonstrate how the two manuals are functional, um, and both of them are manual heavy, uh, predominantly, and you, you'd be surprised how, how useful two stumps can be. Less really is more, especially in the Baroque period. <laughs> 